everyone I hope you're doing well welcome back to the channel the ninth cup where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose this is going to be a general reading for a north node south node in taurus and scorpio so if either your north node or south node is in taurus or scorpio this reading is for you it is not house specific it's just the energies for the placements of the asteroids so take what resonates and leave the rest for those of you who are current subscribers welcome back thank you for sharing your energy with me and for those of you who are new welcome my name is karen michelle yearwood i'm an intuitive guidance counselor and I help people like you along the ascension journey. So these nodes, Taurus, Scorpio, you have been in the hot seat for about 18 months. Um, the nodes are currently transiting your sign. So you've had a nodal return and, you know, the eclipses have touched on it. Then we, you know, of course we had Saturn and Aquarius, which are squaring off on your nodes. Um, just a lot going on. So I know many of you have been feeling it. I know myself, I have been feeling it because I have my sun in Aquarius, my moon in Leo and, um, and the Taurus rising. So literally my entire chart has been like on fire <laughs> for the past 18 months. So let me know in the comments how it's been shaping up for you, but we're almost out of it. Um, well, I shouldn't say we, my nodes are not in, um, in Taurus, Scorpio, they're in Aries and Libra, but anyway, um, but anyway, this, uh, nodal, uh, return has for you all has probably felt very, very, um, dynamic and intense. So let me know. In the comments if you feel comfortable i'd like to know your storyline um what am i doing here i'm shuffling the island time wellness because i want to get some uh energies from this deck for you all uh north node for those of you who are still getting used to your chart studying it as a reminder it's an asteroid not a planet and it is about where you're meant to us where you are meant to ascend to could be wrapped around challenges hardships um fears you know shortcomings obstacles but the south node is where we are comfortable it's what we do really really well innately well no one taught us we just incarnated into this lifetime doing those things really well um so where you have your whole sign houses of tar uh yeah of taurus and scorpio that's going to be the areas of life that your nodes most um most powerfully impact um but obviously we're all different so some of you may have personal planets in taurus or scorpio you may have things making strong aspects to your nodes so um, those storylines are going to differ depending on that okay so i do study western astrology and i read charts according to the whole signs method not enough this just came out for the um aries reading and we are doing um dream current reality and fear so in the dream position is not enough and in the dream position you know dreams here in this reading it, obviously it doesn't have to be literally dreams or something that you want to come true it's something that could be down in your subconscious mind um something that you know i jokingly said in the aries libra reading that is more of a nightmare so this could be something that maybe again is circling circulating through your your headspace could be subconsciously or even consciously as just that you maybe have not um risen to an occasion or you know you haven't completed something or done something well i'm getting that energy here and, and that could be the taurian energy um, taurus is very grounded it's very sufficient um efficient you know it's all about um, the resources that are available to it it's a venusian ruled sign um so with this not enough here um again there could be maybe you all feel like you don't make enough money or you don't have enough resources to have what you want or to do the things you want um and so are there are some issues here around like your ego and your confidence you could even be experiencing jealousy all right so this is a safe space we're all human beings so this is not as a criticism this again is just some energies around the storylines that could be happening with your nodes in the current reality we have addiction codependent obsession possession controlling has a block restraint yeah so south node scorpio this sounds like south node scorpio stuff um, scorpio energy can be very obsessive um it's mars ruled um it's the ruler of the eighth house the, the natural ruler of the eighth house so it's things that are um kind of below the surface so many of you could be struggling with some kind of addiction um doesn't have to be substance abuse but you know bad habits you know it may be addicted to spending could be things uh, related to your resources or your body because that's the taurian energy um like literally things you put in your body things that you eat things you ingest um what else you know with, with the codependency that's the more venusian energy the ruler of taurus um, feeling like you have to have somebody by your side or with you to feel valuable or worthy um, and so obviously this is creating blocks or has created blocks so now because the nodes um are in your nodes you're still having this nodal return um you're still kind of in it right you're still maybe 
in the trenches trenches of it but i know when the nodes do transit into aries and libra there will be that reprieve you know you'll feel kind of light in this last eclipse coming up i think it's in october the end of this year it won't be as um it's a partial eclipse so it won't be as intense as these previous eclipses have been um the end of last year and spring of last year um but i think this you know again this is an energy of like being cracked wide open and that is really what eclipses are supposed to do you know it's like a bolt of lightning to whatever area of your chart that they're sitting and then you have to think about what else you know the nodes are touching or aspecting keys on a ring many options decision uncon unconventional string along one night stand and this is in the fear position all right so maybe a fear around um just that you know not having someone commit to you. And I know that this uh, card seems like it's speaking more to romantic partnerships, you know, especially with one night stand here, but I'm getting that this could be related to um, your job, your employment as well, you know, feeling like, you know, you wouldn't get the type of um, uh, long-term employment or, you know, in durability or endurance that you're looking for with a position. Um, you know, and so like with these many options and decision that could be like on the employer side, like maybe you're thinking, oh my God, there's so many other people applying for this position. Like I'm not enough, right? Like what I have to offer isn't enough. Or, you know, I'm so like codependent, like, you know, my title, like I'm so obsessed with the way, um, you know, I'm going to be seen with a certain title. So these again could be some of the storylines happening. Just apply it to how it resonates. Um, bottom of the deck, interest, interesting kisses unconventional oh sorry unconditionally loving giving and receiving affection falling in love so it's at the bottom of the deck so maybe this is what you really want you know maybe this is again um what the where the block is you know the block is in you know receiving love or at least healthy love let's see what the tarot has to say for you guys taurus and scorpio let's see Someone could be coming here for you, coming in for you as well. Perhaps in um, about a month, Taurus season, you could meet someone when the sun transits through Taurus. Now, the good thing for you guys is, you know, we have Venus uh, transiting through Taurus right now. She'll be there until April 11th. Um, and then what else? Oh, you know what? I think it'll be after the nodes exit out of your sign. I was going to say uh, Venus will be in Leo from like June till October, I think, of this year. But I think by then, like I said, the nodes may be in Aries and Libra. I just have to double check. Um, but that, you know, would be a beautiful aspect for your nodes because it would square. Even though squares are tension, but it's tension with like a beautifully placed placements, right? So Venus and Leo is very beautiful. It's not exalted there, but it's still a beautiful energy, at least for, to me personally. And it will be squaring your node in um, in Taurus, which is Venusian ruled. So that's very like passionate, right? That's very creative. Um, but like I said, I think the nodes will be out of your signs then when when Venus gets to Leo. Um, you get a good shuffle here. I'm using the Muse Tarot deck to get some tarot for these energies. We have the Muse of Materials, the uh, King of Pentacles here. The King of Pentacles here is coming out with the um, dream position. So I think this came up for the Aries and Libra reading. Um, some of you may have some placements in Aries and Libra. You're in King energy. You're in Pentacles energy. You are worthy. You are disciplined. You're knowledgeable. You, you have wisdom. You have experience. But there's something here. There's an undercurrent of not feeling enough, not being, um, you know, worthy of having maybe what you're... Uh, um, what you are willing or what you are capable of accomplishing. So I guess a good example would be like compensation. Like some of you, in terms of what you know, in terms of how you can perform and how you can help someone, you could be making like six figures or at least what you can do. Again, it's worth that. It's worth like six figures, but you may settle for like 60K or something like that. And it just has to do with like, again, your worth and your confidence. Bottom of the deck, here's the star. Absolutely. So healing, the card of Aquarius, here is the star. The star is what? It's the future. Pluto is now in Aquarius, right? So with this Plutarian transit, you know, it's going to square off on the nodes. So that could, you know, again, be like another bolt of lightning to what you really should be doing in this human experience. And maybe it is, you know, community-based. Maybe it's finding a new um, 
a new sphere of influence, you know, new, new people to spend your time with that are like-minded that are, that are gonna, you know, help you snap out of, you know, or heal from this codependency or the obsessions or feeling like you have to control outcomes. You know, it could just be like your surroundings, you know, the people that you have around you. Let's get uh, an, or, uh, a tarot card for this middle part. Eight of emotions. Yeah, walking away. The eight of emotions in this deck is the eight of cups. So perfect. Walking away from the addictions, walking away from feelings of codependency, walking away from things that do not serve you um, because it has been brought to your attention. Yeah, something uh, has painfully ended. Ten of voices at the bottom of the deck right now. Ten of swords. So it's a painful ending. It could be betrayal. It could be um, maybe something ending suddenly or ending in a way that um, wasn't respectful. Like there was like a lack of dignity there. I just heard that. Like there's no dignity. There was no honor in the way something ended. So you're kind of taking your integrity and your dignity and you're moving on, you know, and moving on to something better here. Let's get one more oracle. I keep saying oracle. Let's get one more tarot card for this um, part though. Yeah, the Hierophant. This also came out in the Aries Libra reading. So you're honoring yourself, you're giving yourself um, compassion, you know, values and belief systems here are at the center of where you're going. So, you know, you believe in integrity, you believe in fairness, and, you know, you believe in stability, you believe in, you know, being able to support yourself and not having to struggle to do so. Um, and maybe you are aligning yourself with a new institution. Hierophant is institutions. So going from one place maybe school to another or going from one company to another maybe a company that has different values or a different mission um, that's more in alignment with yourself and what you believe the judgment card flipped over and that's coming out with the fear position it's awakening in this deck but it's the judgment card self-actualization phoenix rising energy it's pluto energy the um, judgment card it's in the fear position but i think this is like fear of you know how people say fear of the unknown? I'm getting the opposite here. I'm feeling like this is fear of the known. Like it's, you know what I just got as well? Like some of you fear how great you can be. Like you fear your own success. You fear your own greatness. You fear like even your own uniqueness, like standing out, even though that could bring you in a lot of abundance and opportunities. It's like you're scared you're scared to, to step in. So I think this is really about stepping in maybe, you know, throughout the rest of this year, you know, you will be stepping into new things, you know, with that Pluto and Aquarius energy, you know, you really will start to see some shifts, even though he doesn't officially get into Aquarius and stay there for um, 20 years until 2024, I believe. Um, but, you know, we're getting a preview of it now. And so this is what, you know, could be shaking up you know a lot of the insecurities and the addictions and things like that because spirit wants you to be ready to step into this new amazing like you know cataclysmic um you know just all around like serendipitous period in your life you know and this could span over a period of years obviously the pluto transit is 20 years like i mentioned but you know it could be kickstarting that um knight of voices at the bottom of the deck knight of swords fast moving knight but it has an, an endeavor, knights have an endeavor. So this could be somebody coming towards you or that could be your energy with this knight of swords. I wanna get one more though. One more card, please. Beautiful, the lovers. Gemini energy. Gemini could be a time marker. Something could be coming in during Gemini season or it's a choice. The traditional meaning of the lovers card is a choice, a choice between two things. Maybe the choice between what you know well and the choice of something unknown or, you know, starting something new. Um, yes, bottom of the deck, the magician card. You're manifesting. You know all the things that are at your disposal. You have all the tools, all the wisdom, all the information, and now you're going to be using that. So whatever opportunity comes in here, it's like you are going to be well prepared. Even though you're scared, you're going to be prepared to basically, you know, blow people's minds. Absolutely. And um, yeah, and like I said, I think you are going to be standing out. You are going to be maybe doing things a little bit differently, maybe, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit here. Some of you could have Aquarius placements or 11th house placements. Maybe your nodes is between the 11th house and 5th house. So that could be it as well. Um, I love this reading for you, Taurus Scorpio. And let's wrap up with some angel answers. So my information is down below. If you'd like a personal reading, I will have my website redone sometime this year. I know I keep saying it. 
Um, but I just started writing on Medium again. I'm going to start to do that for every, you know, big transit to just give you some really short tips on um, what the energy is best for in your life. So right now there's the Venus and Taurus transit. I'll do one for full moon and Libra. Um, I probably will do one for Mars and Cancer um, and so on and so on, right? Pluto and Aquarius, I might do a quick one for that. So there are two to five minute reads on Medium. So if you like to read, if you already have an account with Medium, just go over and give it a follow. The ninth cup is the reading of the public, the name of the publication. Meditation brings answers. Meditation brings answers. So get quiet, Taurus Scorpio. Use that Scorpio energy, that, you know, that south node transit Scorpio. Improving health. I like that. Some of you could have your nose in the 12th and 6th houses. Um, and finally, I like it. Big happy changes. Big happy changes. All right. And at the bottom is peaceful resolution. This also came out for Aries Libra. So some of you definitely might have some Aries Libra or first house, seventh house placements. All right. I'm going to leave it here, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. If something resonates, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if this is your kind of thing. I do hope to see you in the next one and be sure to thrive. Bye.